Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sahay Teja from Pulp. We are glad to announce that we are introducing live sessions from Pulp. Today we will have a short discussion on biologic width. So what's biologic width? So it's the distance from the crest of the alveolar, interdental alveolar bone to the gingival epithelial attachment. From the attachment to the crest of the alveolar bone, this width is known as biologic width and it is, uh, you can uh, see here clearly, uh, from here to here is around 2.4 mm ideal average on average but it is it can range from 1.8 to 4.35 mm and one more thing is on an implant it is 3.08 mm so here you can see the total width uh, from the sulcus uh, to the crest of the alveolar bone uh, it is 3.8 mm in an implant whereas it is 3.1 mm in a tooth structure so so how do we evaluate the biologic width <clears throat> on a normal x-ray there will be at, at least 10 to 15 percent of elongation or reduction in the size of the tooth structure because of radiographic uh, corrections uh, so we cannot rely on radiographs uh, we can what we can do is uh, there is a different method called parallel profile radiographic technique in this technique uh, there is a gp place the cutter percha placed into the sulcus of the tooth structure where you can relate uh, the size of the tooth structure with that of the initial size of the gut aperture gut placed. So your uh, normal class 2 restorations might uh, come and the proximal box is almost placed over here. So uh, if it is placed above the ep epithelial attachment um, and if there is uh, enough biologic width there is no issue with the uh, restoration. Restorations will be fine until they have good contact and contour. But what happens when this uh, restorations come deeper onto the tooth surface? Then this biologic width which is required is violated. In these cases there will be pathological destruction of the bone and it is it will lead to many other consequences. So what can be done when the biologic width cannot be maintained while restoring the tooth structure? Two things can be done. One. Uh, orthodontic extrusion of this tooth so that when this tooth is extruded you have enough space uh, from the base of this proximal box to the uh, crest of the interdental alveolar bone so but that is a long term process it takes time but immediately you have you can what you can do is orthodontic extrusion and the second thing is surgical procedures now uh, in surgical procedures what we do is uh, there will be reduction in the size of this interdental alveolar bone alveolar bone uh, uh, there are many other conditions involved like only if the support uh, is good on the other side if the if you need to reduce the bone on the mesial side if the bone is sound on the distal side then you can go for it you should see whether the remaining interdental alveolar bone can give enough support for the tooth structure to function normally uh, so uh, this is about biologic width and uh, what if biologic width is violated? Uh, you can see there will be chronic progressive gingival inflammation, localized gingival hyperplasia, gingival recession, pocket formation, clinical attachment loss. So um, almost all kinds of periodontal disease follow up uh, once you don't uh, uh, maintain this biologic width. Uh, so we have a small question. Uh, which of the following has impact on prognosis of a deep class to restoration? So no tooth structure proximal to restoration not much biologic width maybe yes salivary enzymes to some extent yeah uh, but periodontal status of the tooth definitely has pressure but they have asked us in particular regarding a deep class 2 restoration so in deep class 2 restoration biologic width plays an important role and in this question the answer will be biologic width. and uh, ideal biologic width in an implant would be as we have seen 2.04 mm is an ideal biologic width in normal tooth structure but in an implant it would be 3.08 mm so hope you like this video